Should we start talking or? Are we ready? <laughs> Hi. All right, guys. We are back. And episode number 31 already. And we have special guest Anastasia Yankova back to Thailand. Welcome back. Thank you. So <laughs> how? Thanks. That looked rehearsed. <laughs> So how, how have you been? And kind of lead us from the fight. Uh, obviously, you fought in Bellator 200 back in London. Then you went to Russia, and you're back in Thailand now to train and stuff. So go ahead and take us through kind of what, what that experience was like for you. Obviously, it was, it was a loss. That's a tough thing to deal with. Um, first one. Mm, yeah, it was first loss in MMA, and it was not fun, sure. And people who was there who go through this they will understand and it's it's hard to like uh, make it more bigger than it it is in, in your heart you know yeah but it's part of the sport i guess and it's two people go there and one should be loose and sometimes it's happened and it's you it's you yeah so it's not because you sometimes it's not because you don't train enough and don't go don't give your all to this sometimes it's just because other things your opponent can be more um have more experience um a lot of little little things for make this um win for her and lose for you that's why the sport's so so interesting right i mean like so many facets and I, I, d- I don't want to make excuses for me or something, but after this loss, no one can say what I was read before, something like, oh, you have easy oppo- opponent, you just pretty face and, you know. No, I have like the same situation as other girls there. And well, you've also beat tough girls in Bellator that are that are still doing good and winning so I think the hate that you got um it's just hate you're gonna get regardless jealousy I mean because you're fighting girls that are still in, in Bellator they're still fighting they're still winning you, you know Elena or whatever Elena Elena Lena uh she's good she's still she's still winning she's doing good she's a good fighter and you beat these girls so this was the toughest girl for sure and uh, because of her BJJ I mean she had one thing that was really really strong and we knew going in, this was the the risk we had. We knew. We knew that the risk was going to be we were going to lose this on the ground if we lost. Um, but we were optimistic and, and we could defend the takedown and that we could stop the, the you know, that she would maybe gas out more than she did. And we could control the fight enough but before it got too late to win. It didn't happen. But so it's kind of one of those fights where we, we kind of knew the risk as with any fight. But I think it was a big fight for you to show, again, like you said, that you fought a, a big, tough opponent. You know, a girl who fought in the UFC, Ultimate Fighter, made it to the finals, BJJ, Purple Belt, champion. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't win in there with a tougher girl next to the champion. I'm sure she's fighting the champion next anyway. So she, you couldn't have fought a harder girl, really, in, in, in Bellator, and you did fine. I mean, you were- You didn't get finished? You didn't, you didn't get close to finish. You, yeah. you weren't in any kind of danger, and you, you were doing modeling shoots right after, which I suppose you can't do that if, you're, if, you're, if your face is, too beat up, so that's a good thing because you usually get your face beat up even when you win. Wow. No offense, but yeah, wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, usually when you win fights, everybody. You know, like your face is all busted, your nose is broke, your jaw, your eyes. So. Mm, and just you know, <laughs> like well, a, it's true I, though. I just I just know who I am, and you remember like a like my coach. You remember like uh, how it's happened then they ask you about like okay it's your opponent it's uh, your next fight and i just person who say yes yeah, okay you course. give me this opponent and i take it and i will be do everything what i can for for beat this opponent yeah and so. it, was, it, was the, it was the main choice we had you know it's not like we had a whole list of people to choose from but again, we agree with a fight. You know, we agreed yeah. to have a tough fight. She wanted to have a tough fight, and that was about the toughest fight we could have had next to, like I said, you know, a champion or something. So, you know, it, it is what it is. I want to say this too. Um, I'm not saying you're not a real fighter if you've never lost, but I am saying you've never experienced what it's like to be a real fighter. Not a real fighter, but a full, the full aspects of being a fighter until you've lost, because. 
um, I mean, it's like being a firefighter and, and not putting a fire out ever or yet. You're a firefighter, but you never had to go in the heat. You've never been burnt. You've never seen people suffer. You never, you know, so it's like you haven't experienced some of the main things that are the most like uh, impactful of, of what it is. So for fighting, the losing. The and downs. Of, yeah, and yeah. losing a fight is one of the harshest things for a fighter. I mean, that's it's a nightmare. I mean, when you go out there to fight, that's why you're so nervous is because you don't want to lose. You're scared to death of losing, not because of the pain, not because, you know, uh, any of that. You, you're you're embarrassed for your team or for yourself. You're, you're um, hurt. So it's like until you f- feel that feeling, I feel like you haven't felt that whole fighter experience. And then when you do lose and you feel what that feels like, now you felt every aspect of being a fighter. You fought what it, or you felt what it feels like to win a fight. You know, you know what it's like to train. You know what it's like to compete in front of a bunch of people. Now you know what it's like to lose in front of a bunch of people. And it's like it kind of goes full circle. So I want to ask you, since this was your first loss, you were highly touted. You were um, winning a lot of big fights. Um, was the loss what you, what you thought as far as what you feared? So w- when you were going into the fight, you always feared losing. <laughs> How was the loss in comparison to what you expected a loss would feel like? You, um, you just go there and do what what you what you can do, what you was preparing for. You, mm. I, you know, I think the most like a bad way to lose if you go from there and feeling like a oh my god, I don't give my all, right. but I don't feel this no, because right. I did everything what i i can did and i just was i remember that i tried i tried to do something and i feel like uh, oh um i hope it's not will be st- stop i thinking only about um you know it, it was a few moments then uh, it was really danger for me and mm. um i was thinking about it's can it can it stop right right now it's cannot yeah. and i will be continue I will be continue and you know like a sport this hard sport can give you a lot of things and i don't think in a, um, talking about your body about how strong you are uh, physically but it's really changed your head mm-hmm. after i was talking with my friend and i was thinking Okay, how it's changed you if you don't thinking about punching on your face, don't thinking about anything. You're just thinking about don't stop and continue and do something and try to do something, you know? Mm-hmm. And then people ask about like uh, why you do it and all of this stuff because because it's part of you, you know? Do you yeah. understand what I mean? No, I get it, yeah. And you did fight the best you could fight, you know? You, you went out there and you fought as hard as you could to defend the takedowns and it just wasn't enough. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like Bob Cook always told me, he's like, you lost, move on. You know, what can you do? You can't, you can't live in the past, time to, time to move on, time to, time to get ready for the next one or, or do whatever, but uh, it's tough. Um, can you, I've, I've never asked you this, which is kind of weird, I guess, but um, how was it when your first loss against uh, Yushin Okami? I mean, uh, your first loss in the UFC. Like, that was tough. I mean, I get we were in. We were I in lost. Houston I lost before UFC, but I was I was um, in WBC, WBC yeah. and I was on a five fight win streak and fought for the title. Me and Chris Lieben fought for the title, and so it was a title fight, and it was a big fight. And Dana White was front row. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Dana White was front row because he was looking at potentially signing me and I think Mike Kyle on that fight. So he came kind of recruiting, sort of. Did you know who he was then? You, yeah, had, well, I had an idea. Just, well, I mean, I, I mean, he no, it was, he was yeah, of course. Twelve and years ago, he was huge. I mean, the UFC was still the biggest organization, so um, there was that pressure of that, and then I ended up losing that fight, and and it was a you know, it was a TKO, so it was like I got knocked down and they stopped it, and that was a harsh one. That was the harshest loss I've ever had. Now I don't know if that was because it was the first or if it was just because how harsh it was. Title fight too, but it was harsh. Like I I, I was like depressed and like separated myself from everyone for like a week. Like it was bad. It was, that was a bad one for me. And then the funny thing is, is like I picked myself back up and went to the gym. And the very next fight I had from that fight, from losing against Chris Lieben on the on the, the WC uh, card when he was watching to recruit me for UFC, which didn't happen, but did. Um, my very next fight was Ultimate Fighter. 
So it's like, you know, that's one that's one reason to just keep pushing. You never know what can happen. I would have never dreamed that I would have went from that fight, losing in front of Dana by TKO, a complete finish, to going on the Ultimate Fighter. And then, do you and remember then the time frame from five that loss in the to, UFC right after that? Do you remember the time frame from that loss to, like, when was that fight compared to when you started? Not that. I mean, I don't know. It could have been maybe six months or seven months. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe not that much, but... Um, but then I, I, you know, like I said, I didn't let it get me down. I didn't let it make me insecure as a fighter. You know, I just talked it up to what it was, you know. And then I went 5-0 and in the UFC and then fought Yushin Okami. And that was in my hometown. Yeah. Both of my first losses were tough. That was the first time. I think the, I think that was the first time the UFC went to Houston and like yeah. a big show. And, and I was the Houston kind of kind of UFC fighter at the time. UFC 69? Yeah. <laughs> 69. Very memorable night that one was. Yeah. For a lot of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> for the first time, we won't mention why. Yeah. For the first podcast we've ever talked about, yeah, exactly. 69, we won't, we won't mention why that was so memorable. Anyway, but... Uh, that was a banner fight for you, though. Yeah, it was a banner fight. It was uh, very publicized. We banner weight? What, 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 I don't know. Anyway, so uh, long, long story short, yeah, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. But anyway, like I said, it, that's what makes you a fighter, I think. And, and well, not, now you've heard, you, you felt what it's like to... to to lose which sucks but also makes you stronger and not only just in fighting but in life and tackling anything you know I mean, losing a cage fight is is bigger than losing other smaller things in, yeah. in the rest of your life so it's like when you can relate to oh man i lost a cage fight in front of the world this isn't so bad you yeah. know for your future so it, I, I think it, there's a lot of good that can come out of it as well, well you said it before nobody's going to ever finish their career undefeated no one has. I mean, I mean you can you can be eleven and zero and quit. I get it, but yeah. I'm talking about like getting to the top and continue to want to fight. I just I don't see anybody. I mean, Khabib, like you said, twenty. Khabib is undefeated right now. Yeah. You have to assume eventually he, he he's probably going to lose. I don't want to see him lose. Obviously, well, of course not. But, but unless he's uh, smart enough to quit when he's still in his prime and before these other guys get better than him because they're younger, faster, whatever the case, he'll meet one of them eventually. You know, um, not that it's against his talent. Not not that it's against his ability in his prime but if he fights past his prime anything can happen and and i think one of the greatest fighters in the world is george st pierre and he's lost twice so i think every fighter i mean every fighter so far that's retired has lost that i know of i, I don't know of any undefeated mma fighters in the history of the sport and some of the most famous fighters that you know of that, that are that are you know have lost household names have yeah. tons of losses man yeah. six seven eight ten fifteen losses but they fight tough fights. It's about that's the one thing I do like about MMA is a lot of times it is about the fight instead of the record. Because you look at some of the biggest legends of the sport, they have a lot of losses. Well, it's it's not like boxing where you have to be fifty and one or forty nine and two or you know thirty and and zero oh to be yeah. a known big boxer. Like you can still have. That's why boxing sucks. You can still have losses. Boxing <laughs> sucks. You can't be fifty and zero at anything. That's just garbage. But anyway. Enough about that. Enough about losses. Yeah. We're done Let's with talk that about conversation. Let's talk about some positive stuff. Anyway, you're back. So um, tell us how everything was in Russia. So you went to Russia af after London, and you did, obviously, a bunch of modeling and TV stuff. So talk about that a little bit. And, and what was it a little bit more relaxing than, than fighting? <laughs> um, after fight, uh, yeah, I, I go to Russia, and I was kind of not best mode but i just want to give credit to people who was texting me and who was comment on instagram and everywhere and i never had so like a huge support like this time and it was a lot of people who turn on you then you know then you lose they they finally find reason for hate you for for say something bad about you and f try to f make you feel worse or or you know but so many people who support me i, I was not ex expect this yeah. and even i don't want to sound like come I on who's your friend <laughs> no, stop. who's your new friend <laughs> no don't stop. act shy now <laughs> no we, oh, we okay. Told everybody okay. The gym, so okay what are we getting at here well she's gonna tell you she hasn't um, told you already oh, you're the only one <laughs> <laughs> Stop, no. A lot of people and also like um some really for me okay, it's important and um Misha Tay texted me and say that like a 
stay strong, it was a tough fight. And, you know, I remember then I was just thinking about MMA, even not start training. I was trained Muay Thai and I was thinking about MMA, how cool is this and one day I will be there and I was watching this video and it was only time then um, it's um, was few stars like yeah. uh, uh, Ronda Rose before it was Gina Carana yeah. and Misha Tate and Ronda Rose with Misha Tate every time this um, yeah that's three pretty hot chicks I think just throwing it out there for you <laughs> <laughs> and you know now like uh, support from girl who was one of these three girls for me who started this sport like uh, for woman wow and and it's cool. So I just want to say that also this hard sport like um, show you that the most important it's people anyway. Like uh, people who are around you, people who are close to you, people who support you, people who you respect, and they respect you too. And it's it's you know like a show that that you uh, in right way, right way, and mm -hmm. you do everything right and people who who don't hate you without reason they they see it and for me for me it's important maybe it sounds weird and like a crazy fan or something but it was make me feel better and it's important for me so that people support me a couple of things first um you had said misha tate texted you before during your fight yeah. camp yeah. so what's cool about this is misha tate texted her before the fight when she was winning and when things were going good but she also texted her again after the fight so that was really cool, you know. She she texted her again. We should have her on here. So it doesn't matter about winning and losing, and, and she was she just wanted to show support to Anastasia again. But the highlight, which I can't believe you didn't mention Anastasia, but the highlight <laughs> is this backstage. The highlight comment. Oh. Well, I'll t I'm getting to that next. Yeah. The highlight comment was the Rock, because that's my boy. <laughs> the Rock texted you? No, he <laughs> messaged me oh. on Instagram. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, no, not again. No, we can't go. Another. I don't mean it like that. <laughs> I'm not taking away from her. I'm saying it was about her. Is this Dwayne Johnson? Yeah. So uh, I had made a post, which we're about to get into, about Hoist Gracie and uh, Anastasia backstage. They had a conversation we'll talk about in just one second. Um, and I took a picture of it because it was just a, a magical moment of Hoist Gracie talking to Anastasia. So this is a fighter who not only have I shared a card with, but who I watched in high school and, mm -hmm. and, and motivated me to be a UFC fighter. And I wanted to do what he did eventually, not knowing that one day I actually would fight on the same card as Hoist Gracie. And then one day I would have a student uh, of mine be, you know, getting a speech from him in, a, in the locker room after a fight. It was crazy. You know, it was it's such a surreal moment. And it's cool. so I made a comment. I, I posted a picture on Instagram, made a comment. Um, not a comment. It was like a story, I guess. But basically, like... Uh, my thoughts of the fight and what Hoist Gracie said and how inspirational things were and how to take this loss and what to do. And The Rock came on and commented on that post and actually mentioned Anastasia Yankova and filled her whole name out and everything at Yan Anastasia Yankova. Oh, it was pretty cool. Shit. It took the time to like write her whole like name and everything. And like he was like, yeah, she's going to be stronger because of this and stuff like that. So the support that's that's came out for her from this fight, it's been the most, right, than any fight you've ever had. I mean, we can name a bunch of other superstars. It's and a bunch of just fans. I mean, that's yeah. cool that you know people take time, but especially so, the you know. Because I think people were. I mean, being a fighter, you have that level of respect, right? It, it's not like, like kind of in the entertainment industry. You know what I mean? You don't get respect in the entertainment industry until you're a real solid actor, or until you're, you know, you're in a big movie, or until you've made it. And fighting, you can kind of go into Hollywood and into that realm and be respected right away, like kind of at that party, you know, with yeah. or meeting those guys, because you were a fighter, and a lot of people have respect for you for being a fighter. And so I think with her, it's the same thing. So many people respect the fact that she just went out there and fought, and she fought so hard, and she fought, you know, she put on the line, and fought like a warrior. So, um, but what was it like having Hoist Gracie come in there? I mean, he was looking for you uh, in the hallway, so. He was actually looking for you, and then I, I pulled him in there, and he gave you, I, like I said before, one of the best post-fight speeches I've ever heard. And one of them was, you're going to see who your real friends are now. Obviously, the people who don't talk to you as much as, as when they do is when you win. Um, but you're also going to see um, what it's like to, to, to lose and, and be stronger. And what was that like? 
coming from him? Um, how I said before, um, and how he said that um, you then you you lose. It's everywhere, I guess. And people who don't fight, they they feel the same. Mm -hmm. If you have everything, you have a lot of people who want to hang out with you, right? But if you in bad time, where are these these people? You know, yeah. and and it's same. In, but more maybe you can see it like more. It's w more um, visual in fighting, st in fighting and MMA. But it, it's big support, and how I said, okay, a lot of people who I don't know who who say bad things, but they don't like uh, even thousand people like this. It doesn't matter if I have like uh, advice from Royce Gracie, and I have like uh, messages from people who I really respect, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel that. But everything fine, and you know, like um, I can go through it, and it's not end of the world. It's it just happened. It's happened, and people help, right? People help. Absolutely, and and, and like Hoy said, I think his quote was one of his quotes was losing a fight or having a stumble in your career when things don't go the right way is a way of shaking the tree, and all the bad or sorry, all the bad apples fall, right? Meaning that like a lot of the people that you thought were apples and were part of your, your family and your tree, they fall off, which is good. You weed them out. Then right. you start seeing, okay, because either they're going to turn on you. Then you go 3-0 and they'll be back. Yeah, or they're, yeah. they're going to turn on you or they're going to change the way they treat you. And when you see that, that's when you know that's a bad apple. And so it gives you clarity on who your friends are and who the people that support you are. And I think that's very important. And I will say from experience, because I've been in the same boat. I mean, I've, I've lost fights. I went from being, you know, obviously number one contender at, at 185 to going 910 days without fighting to losing fights. So I've had the, the roller coaster multiple times. And I will say that those people who bounce and those people who don't show you the same, you know, they don't make nothing of themselves, man. Like I'm looking at them all right now and I'm happy where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like I didn't need them. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's not a, not a big loss because those guys, that's all they do. They just, they, they, tr they're like uh, leeches. leeches. They, they suck onto people and, and that's their whole life is sucking onto people. And eventually people see that and either the fighter will, or, or the celebrity or whoever the person is will see that while they're doing it and cut loose of them or they'll just run out of people and eventually realize that they don't have a life of their own. So it's no loss, you know, yeah. no, no, no big loss. Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what we're saying. Say it. And on a lighter <laughs> <note>. whisper. <laughs> wow. Did she just cuss? Sort of. Oh, got potty mouth. There you go. Rated R. Here goes all your endorsements yeah. and opportunities. Rated R for Russian. <laughs> oh, no. In Russia, it sounds really bad. What? Just fuck them in Russian? <laughs> yeah. How do you say it in Russian? Stoltehunya is like. <laughs> it's, it's not. Stoltehunya? It's, it's not fuck them, but it's like. <laughs> Isn't that a vodka? It's like a what the fuck. Yeah, actually. it's like what the fuck. How do you say it? Stoltehunya. Stoldehunya? I don't say this. Is that going to be the title much. of this episode? Yeah. Stoldehunya? <laughs> Stoldehunya. <laughs> well, at least the Russians that are watching can yeah, gather something that we're in. saying. <laughs> They're just going to blah, 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 blah. What really the fuck? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Blah. Um, but I will say this on a lighter note. You are the second person on the Real Quick My Sweet podcast to wear a dress, but the <laughs> only female. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. Uh. For being uh, <laughs> the most well dressed in a dress, mm. um, because I'm still having nightmares about uh, Mr. Bogutsky over there when he decided to come in <laughs> as take a crack picture. whore. Don't have my picture on your wall. Mm. You won't have to think about it all the time. God, that it, was rough. I looked good at before I messed up my makeup. I ain't gonna lie, I did. <laughs> Dude, did, did, yeah. oh. <laughs> I haven't down yet. Did you must have had to help messing that makeup up? I don't think you can even m make it mess that much by yourself. Yeah. Well. I that met was, a dude on the way over here. That was so bad. He beat me. Uh, anyway, so we'll get into some some news now. So, actually, no, no, no. Let's go back to Anastasia. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, okay. let's, there's more things. Let me see. What, what else were you saying? So, uh, how was how, go back into how Russia was when you got there, and, oh. and how different that was, and what you did. You did some some modeling stuff for some sports stores, and like. So yeah. Um, 
in Russia now it's this World Cup and it's crazy. Mm. Oh, First yeah. of all, like it's traffic everywhere. It's uh, people from other country everywhere and a few days it was really crazy because uh, some matches was there and like uh, all the people on streets and they uh, talking with each other they drinking and all this stuff and all right you know like uh, football's fans uh, soccer fans essentially in russia it's called football but you know in america She's maybe it's soccer, it's word. whoever calls it soccer doesn't give a shit about Football. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty much, much the way I've figured uh, that one out. Okay. So, and I could, they, a little bit crazy, then they drank, you know, and it was, it was crazy time. So, but I was there super busy, how I usually do, because most of the time I'm here in Thailand, I'm training, and most of the time I live here, and then I, came to Russia I want to do everything like uh, see my family I have big family and go to my grandmother's and uh, make all of these video shoots photo shoots commercial stuff TV show and I was just have list and people who I was promised that I will be called and I will be in Russia and I just call them like a how I promised, I go there, I have day this, 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 and it was pretty big time, a pretty busy time. Yeah. Well, I want to get into one more story, so we're going to take a commercial break real fast, and then after that, you can tell us about this exciting new show <laughs> that <laughs> wants to have you as a guest when you were talking about at the gym, mm. so we'll get into that right after this. What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. The great Mike Swick. He's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. I'm telling you guys, I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on. Okay, a little commercial there from our sponsor, AKA Thailand. Love AKA that Thailand. commercial. Thailand.com, my favorite commercial. Because <laughs> you're in it? Nah, but uh, yeah, and things are picking up at AKA Thailand, by the way, and uh, it's it's kind of rainy season right now what well, is rainy season right now but the gym's full i mean it's it's good so um i think high season's gonna be crazy this year yeah it will it's so book it. now yeah book now and uh anyway so let's get back to uh you and russia so they want you to do this tv show now explain this um now we're just talking about it i'm not i don't know for sure but uh, yeah and it's um it's actually American TV show, and it's like a Russian make similar stuff. Um, it's about talented people. If I will be translated from Russian, it will be called like amazing people or something like this. So, so it's one of these like shows where they like you come and perform, yeah, and, and then they judge you or you something, yeah. and you win a prize. Is it Russia's Got Talent? Um, something like that. Oh uh, yeah. Russian yeah. Idol. I think it's Russian's Got Talent. Um, from the way she was saying. It's close idea, I guess. Like a similar stuff, but it's r uh, like a s people who somebody dancing, somebody singing, somebody uh, like a have creating mathematic brain, and so. But, but, but now what do they want you to do? Yeah, what, uh, what would your talent be? You don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's the no, you don't know. It's <laughs> apparently not. Yeah, I just, uh, Let's hear it. Can you dance? I don't uh, know. Uh, no. Gangster shot. No, I, I cannot dance, I guess. Maybe white cool stuff or something. 
Y crew. So, so what, what do they want you to oh, do? I don't know what a Y crew. Thank you. I work at the gym. I don't know if that was the Y crew, but it was close. I think just why and a question mark. <laughs> why are you enough. doing that? Yeah. Why, why are you doing that in the middle of our podcast? Okay. So, so they want you to uh, do what? I cannot talking about it because it's kind of secret right now. Ah, oh, but not that many people watch those. Don't worry. No, but um. But God, I want to know it's now. Prof- <laughs> professional, you know. Nice. Uh, well, you were saying they wanted you to just go perform, like or your your fighting abilities. Yeah. We can leave it at that. Yeah. And you're deciding whether yeah. you're going to do it or not. And you're going to break yeah. bricks. No, well, it's not fighting just, abilities. Just break people, yeah. What? Well, uh, not pricks, bricks. So she might be on <laughs> Russia's Got Talent, <laughs> and we can watch her go and and uh, and show her fighting abilities. So she's thinking about doing that. So I just thought it was interesting. That's cool. It's funny when it's not secret and she can talk about it, which she does to everyone all day. But except me, except now on the podcast <laughs> when we're supposed to be talking about it. But uh, wow. you're funny. Well, then we'll look forward to that then. Yeah, and so you have a new website that's uh, coming out, isn't done yet. Uh, but yeah. you have a dude. Oh, let's get into this a little bit. So you have a Facebook page. Um, you had a Facebook page, and it had like a hundred and something thousand followers, yeah. and it was blue checked. So official Anastasia Kova but it wasn't official and I found out about this because when we were talking several months back whatever and and you told me you're like yeah that's not my page and I'm like yeah it's a crazy story actually I'm getting a blue check myself oh, and I was like shit I'm just kidding I gotta go to bed 10 minutes early tonight. I know every time I say a douchey comment uh, this is an inside joke with me and Mark he has to go to bed 10 minutes early um, so my bedtime's usually around I'm not 4 as douchey as I sound I'm just doing this to, to <laughs> piss him off anyway uh, but I was like how in the world can you have a blue check Facebook page? It's not you. That's horrible. Like who's running this page and like who's answering questions for you? And it was a big battle. And so talk about that a little bit and then how we finally got it resolved or whatever. Mm, So, yes, I even didn't know that I have a big Facebook page until this, because I I don't uh, spend a lot of time on Facebook and, um, most time on Instagram, but I start, uh, getting message from people in Instagram. They, talking like oh add me here because we, we're talking on facebook and i'm like uh, nope um and like okay probably it's just fake page it's it's everyone have it right and i was not so many mark mark has <laughs> like that <yeah. laughs> yeah. i think he has like three of them <laughs> i'm the one okay. without the blue check by the way it's m-a-r-k bugatsky <laughs> m-a-r-c bugatsky <laughs> m-a-r-q bugatsky wow mm, see there well like played. that you yeah. can't name one more no nah. m-a-r-c-h that's March. It's a month. But if you could pronounce like, you can know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, let's go. Back to you, Anastasia. Okay, thank you. CH can be pronounced as a K. N- not at the end of a word. There's rules? Name one word there's that not, ends with CH. There's not any word that ends in CH that's pronounced with a K. I bet uh, in the Russian language there is. Oh, well, they have 51 letters. It's different. All right, anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Hold on, I'm going to think about a word that... You'll come up with something. All right, we do a word game too, guys. Sorry. Interesting about my uh, little Facebook story or not? (laughs) It was interesting, but then we this happened from time to time. time. Yeah, Yeah, we're we're sorry. So, so um, we're back with it. So, so back. B a c h. Thank you. (laughs) Good one, Johann Sebastian Bach. B a c h. There you go. There we go. Done. I was right. Moving on. All right, Anastasia, you're back. Thank you for Thanks finally so coming much. back and joining yeah. the show. Um, <laughs> so you had your page hacked, and it was just a It's not a ha- actually hacked. It's just... Somebody started it? Or just somebody just had a page of you that with a blue check? Yes, and I was even don't know about it, and I thought it was just a little fake page, but the last one, then that's why I start f- try to find it and understand what's going on. After in gym... Some girl came to me and, and hugged me and say, finally, I see you. We're talking so long time. And I was like, a, all the time. What? And I that's was when so, you told so me, bad. I think, I think that's when you finally told me and then we yeah, looked into it. Yeah, and you're I like, was How so, do I fix this? so upset Is because it's not my fault. Or Italian no. or something, right? Um, so, yeah, it's some Italian guy making this page. And that's creepy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I still don't know. It's he was texting with other people because I was uh, text him and I see that uh, he was trying to text me a long time, but I didn't see it. And it's a lot of messages about he fan, he made this page and he um, tried to make it big and he actually did. So, and I say that 
he have to give it to me because it's it's not normal and people say that uh, he speak with people from my name it's it's, it's not okay at all but um he don't speak english very well yeah. uh, m- even more like worse than than me and <laughs> he used google translate from italian and, and or uh text me italian and it's kind of hard conversation because yeah. I, yeah, you know so and yes now finally i have this page still be this page but without this blue check well we changed it because here's yeah. the thing so luckily i have a friend who works at facebook and, oh, and of course yeah face b-o-o-c-h <laughs> yeah so he uh one of my japanese friends actually and so he he works for facebook in japan and then put us in the right contact with people in america and got it all situated it took about a week it wasn't that bad actually but they had a big investigation because this guy had you know a blue check and they're like wait a minute this is a huge security violation with facebook the, he was basically catfishing people then right is that what the I mean, kids it, call it he was posting somewhat positive stuff but we sent him like a kind of a threatening message and so then he changed it to fan page but it was still blue checked right so eventually long story short um the page ironically was called anastasia yankova box um it's so it's facebook i kind of explained to her the translation it probably didn't yeah. sound good sounds so, sexual yeah so we went to uh <laughs> j- <laughs> well, just thanks god my english don't good enough for understand this no 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 right there you go perfect um but then we changed it to i'm gonna get it wrong um but i think it's anastasia yankova official but either way, you, you look at Facebook and you go to Anastasia Jankova, it'll be the only blue check. So we do have we do have you a new Facebook page. I didn't want to promote the wrong one. Yeah, I didn't want to I'll put the link in the bio. I didn't want to link to or, or promote her for this next this last fight and then this guy say all kinds of crazy mm-hmm. shit. You know, we had to get it fixed, obviously. Um God, what a f- creepy dude. Creepy dude, man. Answering texts probably to dudes that were being weird and he's like, Oh yeah. Like so, I would do. Yeah. So anyway, it's uh Facebook forward slash Anastasia Yankova official, I think, or official Anastasia Yankova. <laughs> but Did you just look? N- it's not working. <laughs> oh. Um, but anyway, if you search Anastasia Yankova on Facebook, it'll be the only blue check. So that's her official Facebook page. She's building it up right now if you want to follow her. Um, and then if you have any, w- since the website's not done yet, if you have any uh, requests for uh, any kind of events, appearances, modeling, any kind of... Uh, any business related requests for Anastasia, you can email sponsorship at aktailand.com and we will make sure that that email gets to Anastasia and, and that, that she can uh, decide if that's what she wants to do or whatever. So Same goes for me too. All that's, need me all that's, <laughs> all that's coming and, and on the way. Um, and Mark Pogutsky at Mark Pogutsky on Instagram. Page 25 growing, people bro. just go, who? Right when you the said page that. is growing, bro. You've got like, what, 1,300 followers now. Yeah, but alone. When I met you, you had like two because you made my page. Yeah. It was you and Lynn Oden, the only two people that yeah. followed me. <laughs> well, right. I was lonely. <laughs> yeah. It's only last year or two Speaking years Speaking of Lynn Oden, my buddy from L.A., who I was just hanging out with, he's arriving here. Should be in tonight or so. Tonight, yeah. I think tonight or tomorrow. I asked him for the exact time to pick him up, and he didn't send it. I think he was catching the We'll thing have him already. sit on here. He's a pretty interesting guy. we got to get him on. So he'll be here hopefully for a few days, and we'll, we'll get him on here and talk about Hollywood. He's doing a big film now. Um, he's done a big film. I mean, he's, he's, he directed Braven yeah. with... Uh, Uh-oh. Uh, she follows all this f- stuff, I think. I haven't seen a movie since 96. This, this, this Game of Thrones, the big guy, Momo, 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 yeah. whatever. <laughs> I, I think the guy's good, and I and I like the movie, the great movie, and he did good in it and everything. But I just am not good with his name. But because you didn't, and he's very watch recognizable. Uh, I don't Game watch Game of Thrones, right? So anyway, Lynn just directed a big film with him called Brave, and you can watch it on iTunes. Um, but we're trying to get him in there to talk about um, Hollywood because I've been with Lynn, been friends with Lynn since 1996 or 1997. We started out together training. I beat him, and he went the route of film i went the route of fighting and now i'm trying to cross over into more film type stuff and and it's cool so anyway so hopefully we'll get him on on the show as well and uh so let's get into some news um well i was gonna say i mean it's cool check out this segue oh nice i can tell already (laughs) 
<laughs> no, no, no. You know, it's cool that when you went back to Russia, you said that you made a list and you promised all these people you'd yeah. do it. So you're a fighter of your word. You know who else is? Leota Machida. Oh. Because he just signed with Bellator, but the UFC matched the same offer. But since he's a man of his word, see what I did there? Yeah. Then he uh, he stuck with Scott Coker and then they you know the verbal agreement they made. So big, big, big acquisition. Good for him, man. Good, it's good I mean, to that's hear. That's a big acquisition for Machida. Um, Hall of I'm, Fame, I'm sorry for, for, sure. for Bellator. Well, both. Well, both. Yeah. But for Bellator, that's a big pickup. And uh, there's rumors that Vitor Belfort, coincidentally the guy that he just beat, um, is also a free agent. Um, I don't know for sure. I think I just saw an interview with Scott Coker, and he didn't know for sure either. But he said he would definitely talk to Vitor if if he was a free agent. Um, I think and, he's going to retire. Personally. And then as as far as uh, probably, I mean, I was watching this guy in high school. Vitor Belfort mm-hmm. is who I made my style like about. Like I evolved my entire style around this guy in high school during off season football when we were watching UFCs, and he's still fighting today. And I'm retired from UFC. Yeah. How crazy is that? Fifteen fights, and I've already retired, and he's still fighting in, in UFC. Um, but yeah, so Scott Coker in the interview said that they're doing the welterweight Grand Prix. The only person he could name was uh, Lima that's going to be in there. Um, but they're obviously wanting to have, uh, they're probably going to put sign a everybody, guys. all the main guys, you know, and then Roy McDonald's got a big fight coming up. Well, how do you see that fight going? Well, McDonald and, uh, Musasi. Yeah. I mean, Gegard's tough. Yeah. It's a tough I, dude, man. It's I, hard to go against Gegard anymore. It's hard to go against McDonald too, though. Yeah, well, he's lost fights that I thought he was supposed to win. But Gegard wins every fight I think, he, I, I think he's going to lose or could lose. I mean, the guy just he gets if it I done. If I had to put money on it, which I don't gamble, mm. I'm going Musasi. Yeah. I just, I think yeah how do you bet against the guy? Yeah. Um, and he, speaking of uh, Gegard, he also said he wants to fight Machida. And then he mentioned also that he felt 100% that Machida was on performance-enhancing drugs when they fought the first time because obviously he lost that fight. I just don't see him being on. I don't see Gegard. Well, I mean, maybe he he doesn't really shit talk too much, but you can't tell from fighting somebody really. I mean, you can tell sometimes. Speaking of which, uh, also another comment that was made recently was uh, Whitaker. He said that he will attribute uh, Romero's superhuman powers to just magic 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 so yeah. maybe he had magic when he fought uh Gegard the first time and maybe he lost a little of that <laughs> magic big now. strong dude but so whatever the, whatever the kiddos want to call it these days <laughs> 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 Matt, we didn't have magic when i was coming up it was just like pure fighting um and what else there was other rampage news? Oh, but before that there's also now they asked scott coker about um tito ortiz tito ortiz is officially not uh, under contract with Bellator. So he is a free agent, which means this fight with Chuck Liddell and Golden Boy, which Chuck Liddell's already announced he's with Golden Boy setting up a fight, it's probably going down. So what's your thoughts on... Okay, so you got the UFC, which is this huge organization, right? And the Bellator, same thing. Now you have Golden Boy coming in. They might try and start doing these MMA fights kind of like boxing, where it's not like this organization that does fights all the time but they just put together big cards and, and start doing these big matches, right? And obviously Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz is going to be one of them. What do you think about that, both of you? Like, what do you think about Tito and, and Chuck fighting again? And we know Chuck. We've talked to him about it. I don't know Tito uh, as dressed well. dressed like a woman for him, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Because I want Chuck to do what he wants to do. I think he's earned the respect and earned the life that he should be able to live the life that he wants he's and he should be able to do whatever he does um, or wants to do. Um, I also don't want to see him get hurt and fight past his prime and get beat. So I'm tossed on this one as far as my feelings on Chuck. I personally think like him doing this, if I'm sorry, I didn't cut you off, but um, I mean, obviously Chuck's 40, wrong side of 40, you know. He's, he's at least early 40s. Yeah, and uh, you know, so Tito can't be too far behind him. He's like, I think, close. But I think, like, since it's not in the UFC, I think, like, remember old school, like, when you were fighting first, yeah. you know, there was a fight every four months, and people, you know, plan their weeks around these fights, you know, getting their friends together, barbecuing, drinking sodas, you know, and stuff like that. Now there's just a fight every 15 minutes, it seems like, so it's not a big. But if they can put together huge fights, like you said, once every four months, like Golden Boy doing it, I think that could work. And mm-hmm. I think financially, this will obviously be It'll good sell. For, for Chuck and... And Tito. It'll sell, yeah. But I do see uh, Chuck winning this because I think he hates Tito more than Tito hates Chuck. 
So yeah. I can see that going that way. Well, he's won more fights. Yeah. But then again, he hadn't fought in what, seven years. I mean, how long has been since Chuck fought? Um, yeah, that's the issue. That's the so. Problem. I don't know. I mean, he he was mentioning maybe coming in December on the last podcast, which yeah. you know obviously. So I don't know. I, have, I haven't talked to Chuck about it again. I talked to him when it first got announced with uh, Golden Boy, um, but I haven't talked since it's been like it's gotten deeper. And Tito's kind of signed on board. It seems like, um, but I'm pretty sure that fight's going to happen. And I'll watch it. Well, of course. Yeah. Who wouldn't watch it? But, you know, I just I hope it turns out to be a good fight and, and both of them come out okay and they do their thing and, and accomplish what they want to accomplish and, and not take too much damage in the process. That's, that's I, I ideally see, what I hope. I see Chuck taking it more seriously than Tito would. Just, to, I don't know. I mean, again, I don't Chuck's know Tito. Chuck's a fighter, anything. first of all. Exactly. There's, I mean, I've, I've hung out with both. And, like, I'll tell you, Chuck is – mentally as much of a fighter as you could possibly be. Yeah, he scares the shit out of me. He's a scary dude. I mean, he's 100% a fighter. So he, he there's no doubt he's going to go out there and, and fight, you know, yeah. his heart out to, to, to knock Tito out 100%. But, you know, with age and with time off and all that kind of stuff, what factors in? And then Tito obviously has a wrestling background, and he's he's got, you know, youth on the yeah. side. I don't know how well, much but, yeah. uh, exactly, but – and he's active. He's been he's been fighting. You know, he beat Chel Sonnen. And, uh, I saw today, fun fact, one year ago today, Chuck Liddell was at AKA. Yeah? Just so you know. I know that means was that one of those Facebook like a, yeah, a year ago? Yeah. It was one of yeah. those? You always tell me about those. Well, I mean, I get them. I know you have 1,000 memories a day. No. From I all didn't. your blue check friends tagging Stop. you and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I'm going to get you a big blue check on a t-shirt. Just so everybody knows. Oh, stop. I get that too. You get a blue check tattoo, I'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use my paycheck for your blue check. It would yeah, it would take the whole paycheck probably and get that tattoo. Because you'd want a really huge one. I know you couldn't do a small one. <laughs> <laughs> um so okay, so there's that. And uh then the fight coming up with Rampage. Yeah. While we're still on Bellator, Rampage and Vanderlei. So uh yeah, that's another one, man. It's kind of like a Chuck Tito. I mean, they're both seasoned, seasoned veterans, you know. Yeah. So what is the the tally right now? It's uh, Vanderlei's up two one, two to one, two Ram- in Pride, Vitor, we, or uh, and then one Vanderlei for for Rampage and UFC. Yeah. So I think uh, where are you going? Who are you going with in that fight? I've always liked Rampage. I just, I mean, I, I don't know. I just like his style. Is I like the way. He fights. How do I compare? Like I like the way he talks shit because it's funny. It's not so much degrading like Colby Covington or whatever. Or, you know what I mean? It's like it, it's funny. Yeah. So it's it's comical. And I enjoy watching it. You know, I, I you can only hear so much stupid shit out of some of these fighters' mouths about how much they hate everybody and fuck the world and all this crap. But but no, I can see Rampage winning that one. What do you think, Anastasia? I hate my prediction because I always fall on this. But I agree with Mark. You always fall on this. Fo- yeah. Oh, huh. I mean, stop. Hold on, a woman just agreed with me. Time. This is new for me. You said okay. you agree? No, I agree, but um, if you're talking I'm before you fight, it's really few people can do it like a right, interesting way. If you like decide, do it and talking some shitty things, just at least make it interesting, you know? Yeah, make it funny. And I think it's entertainment. It's really few people, so. yeah. See, all right. So, who you got? Here for some. No, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I, I do think I'm I'm a big Vanderlei Silva fan. And when Vanderlei was reigning in Pride for ten years yeah. and killing it, I mean, he he went I think ten years without getting beat, including the fights with Rampage and everyone else in the sport. Yeah. He was he was unbeatable. unbeatable. Yeah. And, and I think most of those people were beat before the fight ever started. They were beat just by looking across the ring and seeing fucking Vanderlei Silva. Because he was a monster. Just his name is a cool fight name, you know. I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, so I'm a huge fan of his, but I just, I just see uh, they're going to get in a slugfest, for sure. And I just see Rampage. He'll get the takedowns, slams, I think. But I think he's going to land those those overhands and those. I think he's going to be more accurate with his punching. You know, Vanderlei is a little bit more wild, and it seems as, as the older he gets, the more wild he is. I think he's going to be a little bit slower and a little bit more wild, and I think Rampage is going to get in and land those shots a little bit better. In my opinion, that's what yeah. I think. I hope it's a good fight. It's definitely, it's definitely going to be a good fight. I mean, look, you got two of the most exciting fighters in the sport fighting. It can't Ten be boring. Ago, it can't. That's the only problem with when they're 
Vanderlei, how many times has Vanderlei had fight of the night in UFC and like he's I mean he's a fighter he, I get he, it They're both he gonna, he's never going to be boring he's never going to slow down and, and try to stall out a fight and Rampage is kind of the same way I mean he's not going to stall a fight either he's going to go after it so either way I, I'm picking uh, I'm picking Rampage there and then uh, yeah so there's that fight um, and in other news the uh, so there's two there's two things that kind of updated that one of the updates was Nick Diaz yeah so Nick Diaz uh <laughs> Nick Diaz um, is allegedly, well, he allegedly um, committed domestic yeah. battery. Apparently, he and strangulation. Yeah, he slammed his girlfriend on, a on the ground and then choked her. Allegedly. Alle- well, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And that's a misdemeanor for domestic abuse, and it's a felony, felony. for strangulation. Yeah. And so he's facing uh, a pretty serious they, charge. He had there a, were a, a couple of pretty serious charges there. Yeah, he had his court date, I believe, yesterday. Yeah. And uh, he didn't show up. It was his, only his uh, attorney. Attorney, but you hear what they tried to do to him? He was out on they 18, tried to 000. raise it. Yeah, to from 18,000 to 100,000. Yeah. Damn, man. But so, they didn't. The, the judge said, you know, no. But but him and uh, and, and another and his Diaz brothers news, and another yeah. Diaz news. If you go to mikeswick.com, if you haven't seen this video, go to mikeswick.com and watch the video. So Nate Diaz just got in a an altercation at a small MMA show, which it I don't. Was, I believe it was a jujitsu tournament. Was it something like that? Some, some kind of some kind of show, really um, small though. But there's an up close video uh, of it on mikeswick.com of Nate Diaz punching somebody in the stands, and uh, unfortunately, the person he punched on video was being held and kind of being taken away, so he wasn't in any immediate danger. So it's going to be hard for him to like, you know, convince a jury that he had to punch that guy because he wasn't being attacked at the no. time the video was showing. Now, who knows what happened right before the video, but at the time of the video, he was perfectly fine. That's what you can prove. The guy that it looked like he was fighting was already being restrained, and then he just reached down and punched another guy that was like on the side that somebody else was already holding. Um, and then what was the what now, or was oh, it, fuck. Was it right, what now? So, guys, if y'all watch this video, just mute it. You don't need any sound. What was it, though? The guy filming says, what's good? Oh, what's good? What's good? What I mean, literally forty-one times. So that's like the new world star, then I guess. Maybe, maybe there's a what's good dot com, and they're starting to put five videos up because literally this guy says it. He probably does say it forty times. It's literally it's what's unbearable good, what's to listen good, to. What's good? I'll tell you nothing well, for nothing Nate Diaz. For no, no, no. And maybe good for that guy he hit. And the question is, are we surprised, motherfuckers? Because I mean, it's they, Nate Diaz. Uh, they conduct themselves differently than most out. I'm not saying it's he good or bad. He has so much money. I know. I don't know why they he do this. He has more money than any other fighter, probably next to Connor and some of the bigger active fighters that are the, the, the GSPs or whatever. How can you possibly get yourself into a street altercation like that? When you know there's going to be cameras. And punch somebody that is not necessarily attacking you at the time. Like when you know Five-year-old there's going to be cameras. Kids have video ca- or uh, cell phones now. With you have to on assume it. you're always being always. videotaped. I'm not counting real cameras and shit. You know, it's fine. I, I don't. I don't know. I just yeah. That's I why I don't do anything stupid. What do you think? Uh, Would you get in a street fight? I if think if you were, if you, you know, before that I live in Russia, a lot of um, TV show make. Um, Talking about this, and they inviting me like expert and a lot of uh, situation. Then fighters use their um, what they can, what they can do. You know, like uh, and I was thinking about if you fighter, it's like a, you, you know, it's like your guns. Y- you bring every time with you your your guns, your your knives. You know, like it's something danger mm-hmm. and. You, you need to control it because other people don't have it. And from you, it will be always like a more responsibility because if some random people will be beat somebody, it will be not such a big, then it's, it will be fighter. Yeah. Because, you know, I was, then I was a little girl, I was um, trained karate and before what, every, sorry. K- trained karate. Karate. So she was in the cartel. Karate. I was like, I was like, <laughs> no, like damn. so you quit drinking when you were five during the cartel? Okay, so. And the stage has got talent. Karate <laughs> sounds much better. Okay, just go ahead. Karate, yeah. I'm a karate just girl. Just because in Russian it's karate, but yeah, karate. Okay. In wherever. Japan too. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Funny thing. So and before every training, we was, um, it's called. Um, Doze, yeah. and 
it's like you promise that you will not use what you learn here against uh, like uh, people who don't try to mm, do something bad for you or right. for people close to you like uh, or, or other people so only for protection and right. um and i believe in this so i understand it can be a different situation but y you just need thinking a few times bef before do something because it, it's much big uh, responsibility for you than for other people yeah so that you know what you're saying about the protection uh yeah. what was it friday or saturday we went out to eat and i was waiting for you it was my fucking birthday yeah no it was a different one. Oh, that's right it was we went to uh I thought you f we I thought went you to the Hilton for your birthday. I thought you forgot about forgot my birthday. All right, you're Spent right. Spent one tenth of my paycheck on your birthday, by the way. Thank you. So, no, but um, one tenth. Yeah. Wow. I hope that food was strong, good. dude. Well, you know what I make. <laughs> you write my checks, <laughs> but uh, not blue checks though. Apparently. No, no. Um, I'm trying. No, I'm trying know. to get you a blue check, dude. I was sitting there looking funny. at the. Uh, I'm trying. We we're sitting there looking. Uh, I, w I was looking over the balcony, waiting for you, and uh, that guy. So you were turning or trying to turn. I'm trying to park. I got this yeah. big car in Thailand. Everyone drives mopeds. And so it's hard to find parking. Dick so I clown. slowed down a little yeah. bit. Yeah, well, yeah, which you're supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, this guy tried to go around you. He had a man bun. Remember that? He did. What and a, and a female was driving, so he was on the back of a female with the man bun. Yeah. That's two nose right there. And she was bigger than him, which is three nose. Huh. And um, so he started just beating on your door. Yeah. And I can't believe you didn't kick that door open. And well, just, he took off. But it, we were in the middle of the road, We could have got him. But I, I, you heard me at the, yeah. the, at the dinner conversation. Yeah. I couldn't let that go. That really bothered me. But I wouldn't have, like, went out and beat him up or anything. But And we, uh, then we spent a good half hour waiting for him to drive by. <laughs> God. What a, but what an asshole that guy but was. See, like that, that, you know, I, I was mean, to sit there and flip you off or say, screw you, or, you know, don't slow down on the road. But to just start, like, actually physically pounding on your car while you're driving i mean that was kind of shitty yeah I mean, but i mean in thailand man these guys are drunk yeah, you don't know who you're messing with when you do that and obviously that's the thing perfect example with it being you in there but, but, you not, know? I mean, but i'm saying not even being me i'm the least worry of this guy like i mean it could have been a thai guy I and mean, my, my windows are completely blacked out the whole yeah. car so it's tinted so like you couldn't see inside the car and like in thailand you don't want to mess with a thai person there could have been eight thai mafias in there it or could be you, know? you don't want to mess with any thai person yeah. i don't care if he's changing your tire you i don't, don't care if he's changing don't. his sex because even those lady boys exactly. will beat the shit out of you. <laughs> There's lady boys fighting Muay Thai, and they're doing quite well. <laughs> you don't mess with Thai people in, in that way, yeah. disrespectful. So it's like that was a huge risk that guy took. I mean, I think me being a UFC fighter and probably not going to risk too much against him yeah. was probably the, the best case scenario for him. But if it had been a Thai guy, had been the two Diaz brothers, I could there. have easily bumped him over yeah. and like knocked him down and kept going, bike and or just stopped and then got out, and he would have had no place to go but to deal with me. If it was a Thai person, I've seen them do a lot more crazy things than that. Yeah, like, they'll cut you for. I've seen them do a lot more crazy things than, than. Uh, we should do a we should do an episode of just shit we've seen in Thailand. Yeah, because there's some. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I'm, not a, what sort I'm looking for hooligan, if you will hooligan. That goes you have to the old Russia? football. Hooligan? Hooligans, yeah, sure. Oh, you saw Hooligans. them all for the World Cup? Um, some, some people, Were yeah. they out there messing, kicking shit over? Um, probably if uh, Russian would be lose that time, probably. But they was so happy that time because... They still the tear shit up. In mm -hmm. America, if you win your championship in <laughs> football, basketball or something, then you tear your city up, just what we do. <laughs> yeah. Did any of those fans try to kick it with you? Because they're soccer fans. <laughs> you got that. No, if it's I, not funny, I'll explain it to you later. Mike liked it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. It's one of those dad jokes. You have these dad jokes. Uh, yeah. Which I that's what, what we're gonna do. What? We're gonna do dad jokes. Have you seen those those internet videos yet? Mm. Like, so you tell me one. They're obviously stupid, but if I laugh, you get a point, and vice versa, and see who wins after like five, six jokes each. Oh, we're gonna do that. We're gonna have to, yeah. But we got to write our own. So it has to be stupid jokes and it has to be all original? Yeah, like, um, what do the carpet say to the floor? Don't move, I got you covered. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll explain that one to you too. So like Laffy Taffy jokes. <laughs> yeah, they're stupid as shit, but they're actually pretty entertaining. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you, obviously you know how you and I like our dumb shit. Yeah. But, I don't know, just future, uh, I'm just thinking ahead. It's kind of what I do. All right. You know who's not thinking ahead? 
Demetrius Johnson. <laughs> wow. Look at the Segway King. Dude, I'm, that's that's my new thing for the show. Just great segues the whole time. Nice. So what what's the news? You said something about this before. Uh, yeah, DJ apparently just doesn't want to fight TJ Dillashaw. Now, I mean, you got DJ, who I might have had some thoughts of before. Great fighter, but... Yeah, but it's backing it up now, yeah. what you said. I mean, why aren't you fighting TJ? You wanted big money fights. And it's not like... Demetrius Johnson is... Why would DJ, who's going down as one of the best fighters in the world, is what he wants. He wants to be the pound-for-pound pound greatest fighter that ever lived. Why would he pass up any fight from any man that can make his weight class? I can understand if he is not jumping to another weight class or whatever. But anyone that can make his weight class, there's no excuse. You, you shouldn't be considered the greatest fighter in the world yeah. if you're turning down fights in your own weight class. That makes no sense. If you're turning down fights in your own weight class... You're not even the best fighter in your own weight class. Then. Yeah, you're not. You're not fighting the best fighters in your weight class. That's I, crazy. Say, I don't know if this is true. I'm, I'm just getting this yeah, from you, but I don't, I don't know his exact dollar figure what he makes, but I would imagine probably 300k a fight. Nothing to sneeze at, you know. But for to <laughs> fight TJ, I mean, he's you might get. Well, no, but nobody's watching his fights. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. He wants these big money fights. That's yeah. probably a million dollar fight. You're you right. Do it right on paper. Viewership is everything, and, yeah. and and not many people probably do tune in. So I, that's just my personal opinion. Like I said, I've been kind of critical of. Not just DJ, but that whole division. Cause Let me ask you this, though. So going on that, what do you think about Cody and TJ? It's going to be another good fight. I mean, had there been six more seconds in that first round, Cody would have won that fight. You know, knocked him down right at the end and yeah. all that stuff. So That was a tough – it went back and forth. You know, I mean, so many would have, could have. I get it, but – So uh, it's kind of a hard prediction to make because you can't – I mean, all you can base it on is that they're both great it, fighters. And, yeah, it's and hard to go against one way Cody, together. too. I mean so – What do you think? Just make a prediction. Cody, second round knockout. Think so? Yeah. I think he's motivated, pissed. I, I, that's the way. You're not know. good at predictions, are you? Uh, yeah, for sure none, but uh, for sure it will be interesting because maybe it will be close, maybe it will be finished. It, you don't know, but it will be interesting 100%. Who? You got to pick one. Just agree with me. I usually <laughs> bat about 800 when it comes to these. Oh, okay. She'll pick Cody because okay. Cody, I mean, Cody helped her and trained her. That's so. true, yeah. Cody. Cody, yeah. Cody's, Cody's yeah. part of our, uh, was, was part of our help. Well, he's he's sitting fire. right there up on the wall. And he's, and he's got his name on our wall. <laughs> but uh, Every wall at the gym, too. <laughs> yeah. We made that guy sign so much shit. But the thing is, with Cody, um, he's got a lot of anger ready for this fight. And that can turn into, emotion turns into power. And But see, I think he had anger going into the last one, too. He's pretty much for the same reasons. This whole he's alpha probably male a lot shit. more angry now. But yeah. <laughs> Or, but now he knows how to fight him now, I think, too. Yeah. So, yeah, but really, I mean, the thing, the way they fight, I don't think it's going to change much. They're not going to, it's not like they can, I mean, they can prepare slightly, but it's like they fight very similar and like they're, they're going to be throwing bombs and it, they're both going to connect. It's just going to be who connects cleaner, I'll faster. Watch. When is it? But well, I will say know? this from, from, uh, training with him and, and, and especially with when he was training with Anastasia and stuff, but he's super fast. I mean, I've never trained with TJ, so I don't really know, you know, a lot about TJ. I know he's a, he's a good fighter, great guy, and uh, I wish him the best, but um, fucking Cody's fast, man. Yeah. I mean, I know he's small, so it's like obviously smaller people are faster, but like he's really fast. Like everything he does is like just, I'm just like, maybe it's because I'm old, but well, super fast. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, you can be more like stronger if you will be trained hard, and you can like be make your strange condition good. Mm -hmm. But your f how fast you are, it's kind of with what you born born, I guess. I don't agree with that. It's you can make it, uh -oh. but you have limit, right? Yeah, I think it, it is genetic a little bit, and I think in Cody's case, it's genetic. I think he's very fast naturally, but for me. I mean, my nickname was Quick, and then they said I was fast or whatever, but I, I'm only saying this because I was ridiculously slow. If you look at my fights in WC, like when I fought Kingo Ura and when I fought James Gabbard and when I fought even uh, Chris Lieben and stuff, I was a very slow fighter. And it took Paul Buenatello, who was a fighter at AKA, who came in, who was a heavyweight, and he was this big, chubby heavyweight, not quite Roy Nelson chubby, but, like, he was chubby, and, like, he has such fast hands, good boxing. He fought under Arlovsky. He, mm -hmm. he fought. He fought some big guys in the UFC. Um, he was at the top at the UFC for a while. Um, and I remember when he first came to AK, and I started watching him do mitts and stuff. I'm like, bro. I'm like, because I mean, I looked at this guy, and then I'm watching him 
fight and I'm watching him train. I'm like, dude, how, how are you? How are you so fast? Like, how are you landing these uppercuts? And like, and he's like, man, everything I do is with speed. He goes, uh, the bag, uh, pad work. And this is what I teach people at AK to this day because this would help me. But um, sparring, every single thing that I train, when I train as fast as I possibly can, every punch, every jab, every cross, fast as I possibly can. Um, I'm usually using 16 to 18 ounce gloves. Fairtex made me a custom 20 ounce pair of gloves one time. It was wow. these freaking huge gloves. Um, and you got wraps, they get wet. So you're looking like two pounds sometimes on your hands as, as the fight camp goes on. And your cosmetic. Uh... And cosmetic wedges to protect my <laughs> knuckles. And, and when you're throwing so fast, you can, you can build your fast twitch muscles in your arms. And that's how I got fast. And, and by the time I got to UFC, which was years later, um, I, I could use that speed to win a lot of fights. So I do believe you can build speed. So for those at home that, that don't have speed or that natural speed uh, genetics, I have to say that I, I, I agree you can build speed because for sure I was slow. Look at my fights, man, and like my punches, my kicks. Everything was slow up until UFC. Yeah, ask a Justin Vin- or is it Jason Vigno. Justin Vigno. What was his first name? Which one? Vigno. Vigno? Vigno. Yeah, however you say it, sorry. Um, when you punched I, him. No, no, no. Oh, you're talking about Jonathan Goulet. Goulet, Goulet. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. When you hit it, the other. You just counted that. Yeah, because it was we something like fight or something. 21 times in nine 17, seconds. 17, I think it was. Seven, whatever it was. It was still fun, but yeah, you got the best of him in that six second exchange or four second, whatever it was. Yeah, but it's speed kills, man. Yeah. And, and people come to train. I saw a private the other day. A guy came in. Uh, we work speed. Speed kills. So, I mean, speed is so, so, so important. And I think that's what really works for Cody is because he's so fast. He can get away with things. And if he misses, like we've seen Cody like when he transitions. He does those transitions from yeah. like multiple angles and chokes and submissions. He'll do drills with multiple ones at attack, like multiple attacks at a time. And that way when he misses, he's right to the next one. Most people, when they miss, they're just like, Ugh, and then they go to the next one, or they pause, or they stop. He's just like, boom, 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 boom. It's so fast. Yeah. And that's why he has so much success. And, like, you know, I tell everybody, it's like, just, you got to work speed, man, because it definitely doesn't hurt. For Speed's sure. Speed's one of the best things. Look what it did for, for sure. uh, Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. Yeah. There you go. I mean, with three movies out of that. That's a uh, speed movie reference. Mm-hmm. No. You'll get it one day when you yeah. watch American Cinema. Yeah. <laughs> we have big screens and stuff. It's mm-hmm. cool. Indoors, yeah. We're not dog in Russia, but no. they they have theaters in Russia, right? <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> sounds like we're done here. Sounds like we're funny. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Anyway, so do you have anything else to add before we leave? No, I guess. We you're back. One, you're one of your uh, fellow Russian females just got into the UFC. Oh wow. Uh, Antonina, Antonina, Ant- Shemenko. So this is the uh, sister of Valentin, and she's thirty-nine and one in kickboxing, and six and zero in MMA. That's she's pretty just good won, record. She's won on con- the Contender Series on Tuesday, and now she's in the UFC. So do you know anything about her? Uh, I remember her fights, and like a, then I was talking about uh, Valentina. Mm-hmm. It's always like they always together. They train together. They uh, grow up together. They kind of like sisters do. I, not usually. <laughs> kind of like Nick and his buddy Nate do. Yeah, kind of uh, like they do. Oh you? yeah, maybe. Gel fighting. Not to interrupt, but did you know Chuck Liddell had a brother that fought in the UFC one time? Yeah, I learned this the other day. Stop. Swear to God. How do I not know this? Because you're not as knowledgeable as me. I believe his name's Scott Liddell. Just so you know. Yeah. Hmm. Matt Hughes, his twin brother, fought in the UFC. Well, I know Matt has a brother, uh, but I didn't know. Matt Sarah had a brother that fought in the UFC. Huh. You like where I'm going with these? BJ Penn? She doesn't because she was in the middle of answering a question. Yeah, my bad, my bad. I just got excited. <laughs> no, no. I have a twin not. brother, too, by the way. Okay, so as you were saying, they were... He was Google it the, like a role. As, as you were saying, they were sisters and doing sisterly things, like no, growing up together, no, hanging no, out together, no, no, sharing no. the same mom. No. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> No. Anything else? Like anything shocking that we couldn't no, figure sometimes out? Sometimes one sister do like a opposite things, and one girl train, and other girl like a I don't know, like a drinks, whatever. <laughs> and it, it's not like a really likely situation. Then they train together all life, yeah. and they both really talented. But it's kind of like a 
uh, Valentina always was like a number one yeah. and Antonina number two, uh, but but she talented. She have like a same trainer, same uh, training camps, and you know. So it's interesting, and I like watch her fights. It's always technical, and it's it's high level. So it's do you cool. know who's younger? Is she younger than Valentina? Oh, to be honest, I don't know. Because I'm wondering if she's just maybe catching up. Maybe she, if she's older than Valentina, then obviously Valentina is the better fighter of the of the family right now. But if she's just yeah, coming up, maybe she's like the Nate Diaz of the Nick Diaz family. Because I remember when I was in WEC, I fought on the same card as Nick. I'm pretty sure, but I was definitely at the WECs when he fought, and he was fighting WC as well. And Nate Diaz would come in, and Nate Diaz was this kid. Like, he was just this jujitsu kid that, like, knew nothing about fighting. Well, I mean, he knew about fighting, but he didn't fight, but he did BJJ, and that was it. And then now, you know, he, yeah. he passed his brother. He's, he made some of the most money of anyone in the sport. And now he's beating up fans. So And he's beating up fans, <laughs> too. So I'm wondering if uh, Antonina, God, I hope that's right. Uh, yeah. I wonder if she's younger, and maybe she's just catching up. So maybe she's it she could potentially like she be better be. than Valentina. Who knows, you yeah. know? I don't know. I don't know her age. But 39 and 1. I mean, it's hard to say that sounds like a full career, but in Muay Thai, that's a good two years, mm-hmm. you know? So it's hard to really say by the the record, 6-0 and in MMA. So maybe she's younger. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Somebody <laughs> will put it in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anything else that you have? You happy back in Thailand? Yeah, I'm happy back in Thailand, and I'm happy back to gym. And actually, I see this new style, and it's so cool. How you how you do it? Like New these style. stories, like uh, it's look like a TV show. Uh, you want to make TV uh, show? Uh, great plug. This is our uh, yeah. So when we were in LA the last time, um, I was working on trying to build a production company with AK Thailand and get better equipment and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to come back and start doing a higher level um, production value. Uh, we did that in the beginning of the gym, and then we got sidetracked with building and like managing the thing and getting it towards a successful business and now we have that that time to focus on uh the media and which is what people pay attention to they're saying something like 80 percent of all advertising in the future or in the next i guess five years is going to be video because that's what people want to see they don't want to read anymore they want to just see it mm-hmm. throw it in their face boom and then move on fast explosive ads whatever so I came back and mentioned, I brought the equipment back. We obviously have great equipment from James and, and stuff like that. We br- we had Dakota in now, who's yeah. another AV guy. And then- uh, They're both 20 years old. The young kids. And so I shared my ideas and they just went overboard. Like, I mean, James just took it to a whole other level with this, like these graphics and, cause I wanted stories. So a lot of people post stories, like the other gyms and other companies, but they're just, everyone's doing the same thing. They're just filming with their phone. And it's okay because it shows the action as it's happening and then you tag whatever, but it looks so amateur. It looks like everybody else. There's it only looks like five everybody else. fonts you can choose from. Yeah. You know, it's so I wanted to do high level edited because we can edit video so fast. We can videotape something, not videotape with the camera, but I mean, over the phone, but with an actual GH5 or something, a high level D- uh, DSLR. And then we can go in there and edit it really fast and still get it out the same day but have it like wrapped in a package where it looks more professional and, and the stories will look just as professional as our videos. And that's, they hats off to them. Hats off to James Spears and, and Dakota and, and our team at AK for, for taking that idea and making it so much better. Cause if you haven't seen the stories, go to AK Thailand, uh, and the Instagram page and you can kind of see what we're doing, yeah. but the students like it too. Cause they're, they're getting really creative. The students are getting showcased in some of them too and stuff. Yeah. So everybody's, everybody's liking it. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So thanks for noticing that. Yeah. Good work. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to start doing actually a lot of stuff, some short films and, and a lot of a lot of cool stuff. With I think we're, we're building a whole production like company, basically. A commercial. So. we got to do that commercial we and talked we're doing about that one. four years ago. Your favorite one. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. I'll let you see it. No, okay, thank you. Yeah, it's no problem. Maybe she'll be in it beating you up. I think that would be a good one. Oh, by the way. Yeah, you might have to beat up this guy, uh, Peter Miller. He's a good friend of mine now. We made, we made buddies at Arnold's house in L.A., and he's a fisherman. He's one of the best fishermen in the world. Would he, would he do something bad for you? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. <laughs> he uh, he uh, is one of the coolest guys I've met, and I, I hung out with him more than anyone at Arnold's house, and uh, 
he is a fisherman who's one of the best fishermen in the world. He has a show called uh, Uncharted Waters on Discovery Channel, which is going to start airing soon. He's in Guatemala right now. I just texted him yesterday. Um, and he's filming. So he goes around the world like kind of like Anthony Bourdain did. Rest in peace to Anthony Bourdain. Mm -hmm. Someone who I loved and watched every one of his shows from uh, No Reservations to um, everything. Um, anyway, uh, he goes around the world and he fishes and he catches fish and then he tastes food. He does activities and we're trying to get him to Thailand. So we're talking to the tourism board now to try and get him in and get funding for it. And he's going to film an episode of a show, Uncharted Waters, here in Thailand. We're going to catch tuna. Um, and then we're going to take him around Phuket and show him the local the local nice. things of Phuket. And so, so what then do you, want you to beat him up. That, well, <laughs> well, well, first he was like, then you can like, he was like, then you can teach me MMA and, and beat me up a little bit. And that'll be like the cool ending to the show. I'm like, I had a better idea. I'm like, I got a girl there who can beat you up. And I'm like, that would be even better. Are you trying to bait him into an ass kick? I am, yeah. So he's excited about it. You so get the bait joke? So you don't I mind, so. right? Because I, <laughs> I volunteered you to beat him up. So you're cool with that, right? He's a oh, fisherman. yeah, for sure. He's oh, a fisherman. You can no take problem. him. No problem. Just yeah. He's really <laughs> cool. Best storyteller I've ever... Next to you, he's like the best storyteller. Oh, mirror her. You. Oh, thanks, buddy. I he, don't speak English. He, yeah, <laughs> he has amazing stories. Secretly, she's one of the funniest people at the gym. Yeah. Yeah, she is. She has this hidden humor yeah, that it's good. only comes out. It's starting to come out now on the podcast. Yeah. The first one, slowly, but this one was a little bit better. You're opening up. Mm, okay. Leave, learn. Live, learn. See there? No. Can you English quite well. Remember when we first met her? She, uh, she barely spoke English. Right? But I was with my friend Dasha and yeah. she speak for me. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you just, you were like a puppet. Shout out to Dasha. I haven't seen her in yeah. two years. She still like Thailand and you and yeah, me. Yeah, sure. She's just busy, busy working Russia. every time. She's a busy girl. Oh. All right. You want to close this show out for us? You're the TV personality. You can say however you want to close it. Thanks for watching, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Wow. Such a This is your moment. <laughs> Okay, I feel like I'm getting Oscar camera. right now. Okay. You gotta look to the audience. Okay, thank you for watching, guys. I hope it was interesting. And see you soon, I guess, if they will be inviting me next time. Not <laughs> next time. Probably not next <laughs> time. <laughs> next time. Maybe. I mean, next time. Maybe next like, time, yeah. like a next, next. Next year. Yeah. Stop. How I can say, like, a next after next? Next or next after, after, after next, next next Ice after. Cube did four movies named that didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Friday after next, next Friday, next next Friday. Yeah. Oh. Ice Cube's you know a, uh, a rapper. Yeah. He's he's cold on the mic. You're cool. talking about a girl with a rap background. Well, I don't know why you don't bust out. We're some again bars. not closing the show out. <laughs> but that's a whole other podcast. So we might bring her back in here just to, just to talk about the <laughs> rapping <laughs> part of her uh, history. I know she's, that she's I a rapper. I'm not even bullshitting you. This, <laughs> This girl rapped in Russia. Do you, you remember she was when Nick kid. Natanui was on here and he busted out that rap for us? Yeah. And I don't think it made the cut, whatever, because of some reason or he didn't do it on the show. I Re think we got on audio, though. Regardless, he's coming back in September. Oh. Let's oh, have do a battle rap battle. Yeah. yeah, but she only raps in Russian. That's fine. At the she'll gym be in when she gets all, like, crazy. Can. <laughs> we can't understand it. So it sounds good, but who knows what she's oh. saying. She's probably like the cat in the hat and the <laughs> kick over the bottle. Like, like, bitty, bitty. It could be, it could be virtually you. anything. We have no idea, but it rhymes. So, But flow, it's important. Is Detzel the greatest rapper? Is he the Eminem of Russia? Because that's who I listened to when <laughs> no. I was... When I lived in Russia, I listened no, to Detzel. for sure, no. But he was no. back then. Back when I was in Russia, 1999, 2000, he was the, he was the shit, yeah. huh? But... Still, but then the Oh, Come mm -hmm. on, huh? You're Vladimir Putin down the wraps right now, aren't you? Yeah. Buddy? Look at you go. Times change. I need, I could, we'll be s talking with you about hip hop now in Russia and Is it show different? you. If, yeah, if you. Uh, I kind of like got. I kind of got away from my Russian hip hop. Uh, How weird. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those yeah weird things. It's kind of just for some reason got out of my mind as of my last twenty years. We got to bring that bottle out here. Showcase your bottle of vodka that you. Oh, smuggled yeah. into the country in 98. That's exactly, wow. Damn, that's 20 years 20 old. Years. Probably not healthy to drink. Uh, you know I still will. Probably. I think All right, but so vodka only gets better with age. All liquor does. 
I don't care if it's got flips. So does our podcast in it. because they do age. They get longer with age. We never How long finish. Is this podcast? God Hour bless these people probably. that are stuck with us, huh? Hey, hopefully, they have a long commute. Um. <laughs> okay, somebody who better finding than me. Oh, you want to end? Do it. So, like, okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just did. All right, right guys. <laughs> Thanks for coming. See oh, Mike, Mike. We'll do it. That's it. Sorry. Right. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. With Mike Swift.